Instrument departure and arrival procedures are often designed to allow aircraft to avoid obstructions on the climb out and descent in IFR conditions. For obstruction-rich airspace, there aren't too many better options than the Pacific Northwest, so we'll take a look at a short flight between Yakima and Bellingham in Washington to explore how Jeppesen departure, arrival, and en route charts used with ForeFlight can enhance your situational awareness. This is Dan from Flight Insight, partnering with ForeFlight on a series of videos highlighting the Jeppesen chart products and how they integrate with ForeFlight Mobile to make your instrument flights safer and smoother. To start out, we have a cleared route already entered in, which we can see if we tap FPL. It includes a combination of VORs, Victor Airways, and intersections, and terminates in a STAR, a standard terminal arrival route, the MADI-5 into Bellingham. Yakima is situated at the eastern edge of the Cascade Mountain Range. Since we'll be flying west over them, we'll be looking to do an obstacle departure procedure, an ODP, to help us navigate the terrain on the climb out until we reach the en route phase of flight. In the details page for Yakima, we tap Procedure, then Departures. We see the instrument departures with both Jeppesen and FAA plates. Our ODP is the Zilla 3, so we pull up that one from Jeppesen. Across the top, we see the familiar row of information and frequencies we have on other Jeppesen charts. On the plan view, the procedure itself is diagrammed out. Maybe the biggest advantage of Jeppesen departure and arrival plates is the fact that they're often drawn entirely or at least partially to scale which when paired with ForeFlight allows us the powerful tool of geo-referencing while in flight. In addition to that benefit, the Jeppesen plate also lists out the standard takeoff minimums, both with and without the adequate visual references. Some Jeppesen departure charts will also include a list of these references, but they can always be found in the Terminal Procedures publication page for the airport. The takeoff minimums for each runway are listed, which is something you'll find on FAA plates, but you won't find this chart showing the feet per minute conversion of each required climb gradient and the minimums for different climb out speeds. This makes it easy to determine if your aircraft can meet minimum climbs. Along the bottom, we have our initial climb instructions and then the routing. Let's say we're using runway 27. It involves a climbing right turn direct to the Yakima VOR and then flying outbound along the 108 radial. Our routing isn't eastbound along the Victor Airway on this radial. We're in the all other departures category, so we want to make a right turn at 4,600 feet back direct to the Yakima VOR. We then want to continue the climb in the published hold until reaching the MEA for our route. For that information, we'll transition over to the Jeppesen IFR low and route chart, which can be pulled up as a layer on the map. With ForeFlight, Jeppesen and route charts are vector based, allowing elements to dynamically appear, disappear, and move around as you zoom in and out so that the relevant details are always visible for a given zoom level, just like ForeFlight's aeronautical map. Contrast this with the FAA digital charts, which are necessarily static and very cluttered as a result. Also, like the aeronautical map, the Jeppesen and route charts allow you to tap on map elements like airports or waypoints to pull up their details which is helpful since the Jeppesen and route charts and aeronautical map are mutually exclusive. Jeppesen's and route charts allow you to customize which elements are shown in the map settings menu so you can declutter the map further by hiding any elements you don't need. Every Jeppesen chart coverage, even the small ones, provide global coverage for the en route charts in ForeFlight, which is a nice bonus. From the Yakima VOR, we're joining Victor 298. The initial MEA here is 6,600 feet, so we can depart the hold once we cross the VOR at or above that altitude. Ideally, our initial cruise will be higher than that though because our MEA goes up again to 9,000 after the PERD intersection. For this westbound IFR flight, a cruise of 10,000 feet should be appropriate, as long as we're comfortable with oxygen conditions and aircraft performance. We'll follow our cleared route through the Seattle VOR into Payne VOR, where the MADI-5 arrival in our flight plan begins. If we go to the flight plan route editor and tap show plate, we can overlay it on our map and use georeferencing. If we compare this Jeppesen star chart with the same procedure from the FAA chart, we see some obvious advantages. Terrain and hydrography are displayed on the Jeppesen charts. With the obvious terrain on the east side of the chart, we can see why the procedure course is placed where it is. Minimum cross altitudes at Payne, Everett, and Tubti are called out in bold and blue. A more general benefit of Jeppesen SIDS and STARS is that each plate is tailored to one or at most a few airports serviced by the same procedure, while the FAA publishes just one plate for each procedure, even those servicing many regional airports. Notice on the FAA plate that route descriptions exist for both arrivals into Bellingham and also for two airports across the border in Canada. 
This isn't too annoying, but consider the Tristan 3 arrival near Washington, D.C. It's used for arrivals into a dozen airports in the D.C. area, which are listed in the route description. If we're going into Carroll County Airport in Westminster, Maryland, we can just pull up the Jeppesen plate for the procedure from that airport's details page and get the information tailored to it. In previous videos, we saw how Jeppesen plates, paired with ForeFlight, can make life easier in the approach environment, as well as on the ground at the airport. Now, seeing departure and arrival charts, and how they're connected to the en route environment with IFR charts, we're starting to see how a complete flight can be conducted under IFR, leveraging these publications. In our next and final video, we'll put everything together and show how to use Jeppesen on a full flight with improved situational awareness.